I'm at a point in Pathologic where infection doesn't really affect me. I'm usually really good at just outright avoiding it or preparing for it by having panaceas or schmouters available. So I decided I wanted to do a perma-infection run of Pathologic. A perma-infection run consists of getting infected as soon as possible and staying infected until the end of the game. This means I'm not allowed to use any panaceas or schmouters on myself ever. And to make this run a bit more interesting, I've decided that at every midnight I'm going to be spinning an infection themed wheel that'll give me a random challenge. Here are the challenges on screen now. Some simply waste my time, others force me to waste resources, and others are just things I need to complete before the end of the day. Like I already said, I'll be spinning this wheel every midnight, but only after I get infected. And if the wheel lands on a challenge I've already done, then I have to spin again and do both challenges. To add just a bit more spice to this run, I'll be holding what I've decided to call the infection competition. For this, I want to keep the bound infected for as long as possible and see between all of them who can survive the longest. And with the intro out of the way, let's start this run. I'm going to need lots of healing items and antibiotics to survive this run, but unfortunately pharmacies don't sell any antibiotics until the plague arrives, so I'll have to settle for bandages and tourniquets. This first day was pretty uneventful. The only highlights of today were taking the leash from Notkin, and I also found a schmouter in a random cache. Since I won't be curing anyone, any schmouters and panaceas are just going to be given out for my fund. I did the usual day one thing, such as meeting old friends, trading, and getting arrested. Here's everything I collected today. I have some things at Lara's and Griefs, and this is my final inventory for the day after the dead item shop. So let's move on to day two. After sleeping at Vlad's, I left for the funeral about an hour before morning. Instead of waiting at the cemetery for 7.30 to hit, I waited outside the lair. As you might have seen, I have absolutely no space in my inventory. It's full of resources like food and bandages, which I can't trade away. So once it hits 7.30, I'll be dropping most of my things in front of the lair. Dropped items won't despawn until midnight, and I'll be unlocking the lair later today, so I might as well do this so that I have space to trade and pick things up while I'm in town. After the funeral, I went to Notkins to question him about the list, and here I got the first antibiotic of the run. I traded some chalk and a broken scissors for a ferromycenium. Next, I bought some lockpicks from Grief, some tourniquets from a pharmacy, and gained access to my family home. Between all of this, I was trading and picking up caches. In a standard run, normally I wouldn't trade with this NPC. He'll trade water bottles for bandages and tourniquets, and usually I need water more than I need healing items. But like I said in this run, I'm gonna need a lot of them. So I'll be trading away a lot of my water for this. I think it's likely I'll always be low on water throughout this entire run. Now my inventory was full again, and I'm going to be getting even more stuff from Father's house, so I'm gonna have to leave another package at a halfway point between the lair and the house. Now that I had the space, I looted everything from Father's house and got the key to the lair. Before I leave this place, in case anyone was wondering, I cannot get infected at this point. There is a plate cloud in the house, but this one doesn't give any infection and it just disappears if you were to walk through it. Next I bought the things I needed for an inventory upgrade, picked up some of the items at the halfway point, and unlocked the lair. Here's what my cabinet looked like after I put everything away. Now outside the lair was the guy who sells the bull. I decided that I'll spin a wheel to determine whether or not I'll buy the bull, and for decisions like this in the future, I'll be doing the same thing. Anyway, the wheel landed on, don't buy the bull. So, uh, sorry bull, maybe next pandemic. Back in town, I took some money from these people outside the dormitory, looted more caches, and did more trading. Another thing I don't normally trade for is morphine, and for this run, I'm gonna need plenty of that as well. Back at the lair, I slept until a few hours before midnight and went out to the dead item shop to wait. Here I bought some fresh meat, and now that it's day three, I can finally get infected. I ran right over to the hindquarters and entered a building. I got hit by a play cloud on the stairs, and I let an infected person finish me off. I did get a bit more infected than I thought I would, and to stop it from getting too high, I took some immunity boosters and my ferromycenium that I got earlier. When I left the building, I passed out and was rescued by some of Notkin's friends. And now that I'm infected, it's time to spin the challenge wheel. So the first challenge of the run is social distance. To prevent further infection, stay away from people. Do not interact with anyone until noon. So before I continue, I think I should explain how infection works exactly. Once you're infected, your infection will slowly take over your immunity bar. If your immunity bar is depleted and you're in an infected district, infection will go up faster. If you have any amount of infection, then your health will periodically go up, and the higher the infection, the higher frequency you lose health. Lastly, antibiotics will decrease infection, but they will really hurt your health. 
This is why I need plenty of bandages, and the morphine is to take whenever I sleep so that I heal more and have to use less healing items. Anyway, I spent the rest of my night picking herbs, so here's everything I collected. I would have sold some to the bar, but I can't interact with anyone, which does include trading and shopping. I made a few tinctures, set some herbs aside, took some morphine, and slept until morning. So currently, my infection is just before the letter C in the word infection. Ideally, I would keep this below the letter F, otherwise I might run out of healing items fast. So I'm gonna need some antibiotics soon. I have 4 hours until noon, and since the social distance challenge means no interacting with anyone, the only thing I can do right now is walk around town looting trash cans and caches. Today there's also gonna be a few messengers sent for me, so I'm also gonna try my best to avoid letting them talk to me. Speaking of messengers, I only got to my first cache, and this little girl is already chasing me down. This messenger is the one that gives you the quest involving the kinds taking your house away. I won't have time to do this quest later, so I'm going to be missing out on some of the loot you get from doing it. Eventually, I ran into Notkin's messenger, and after messing around from him a little bit, he eventually did catch me, which is okay, because now it's noon, and the challenge is now over. So next I went to Notkin's warehouse. He gave me three pills to cure patches, but since I want to survive today, I'm going to have to take them. It took 10 tourniquets and 2 bandages, but this should be enough to get me through the rest of the day. And since I don't want Aspity dying trying to cure patches, I gave him my schmouter. Then, I took all the things I left at Griefs, did a bit of training, and went to the meeting at Town Hall. I added Peter and Anna to my bound list and went back to the lair to sleep for 3 hours. After a bit more training, it was midnight. The infection competition has officially started, and our first contestants are Notkin and Anna. It's also time to spin the wheel again. Today's challenge is insomnia. The pain makes it impossible to sleep. No sleeping all day. I already have one coffee, but I'll need to buy or trade for coffee and lemons later today. Now that it's day four, pharmacies are finally selling antibiotics. I got two monomyceniums and a pocket watch from the dead item shop, and another two monomyceniums and a ferromyceniums from a pharmacy. At this point, my thirst bar was pretty full, and I was about to drink some water when I remembered that drinking water makes your exhaustion go up. So in addition to not sleeping, I won't be drinking today either. I picked my nightly herbs and sold them to the bar. I bought a lemon here and ate it, but my exhaustion is already halfway full. At another pharmacy, I bought two tourniquets and two more pills. Then I successfully treated Anna and bought coffee and a lemon from the shady shop, and another coffee from the hindquarters grocery. And with all of this, I might actually have enough coffee and lemons to get me through the day. Once it became morning, I traded the leash for a schmatter at the nutshell, stole the toolkit with Sticky, traded for another coffee and some drugs and healing items from Vars. My exhaustion was a bit high here, so I ate two of my coffees. Then, I did some trading on my way to the hospital. The kids are also trading for antibiotics now, so I was able to stock up on those as well. Today, there's only one dead body at the hospital. If I want to be able to brew my own antibiotics, I'm going to need infected organs, and these dead bodies are where I'm going to be getting them from. Today, I got some infected blood and a kidney, and all the other organs I got were normal. Next, I went back to Vars to sell the organs I didn't need, and went to the lair to fix the alembic and start brewing my infected organs. I remembered that I should be giving my schmatters away, so back at the hospital, I gave it to the first person who loaded in. Then, I picked up my fund, bought a bandage, and took a pill for my infection. Today, Lara gives you some food, so I went there to pick it up, as well as some of the other items I left there earlier. I spent the rest of my day trading and shopping around town, and because of the kids, I was able to get quite a lot of drugs. From just today, I got five monomyceniums, five neomyceniums, three ferromyceniums, and two neomycenium pluses, for a total of 15 antibiotics. I also noticed that I've been trading for lots of food, so I'm going to stop buying them from grocery stores to save money for pharmacies. To end the day, I went back to the lair to pick up my antibiotics I brewed, treated Notkin, and waited for midnight. Tonight, Notkin died, Grief got infected, and Anna survived. This makes Anna first place in the infection competition so far, and Notkin last. The insomnia challenge is over now, and it's time for the next one. Today's challenge is heavy air. The plague adds a sense of weight to the town's air. No running all day. So yesterday, I had a very small stamina bar because I couldn't drink, and now I won't be able to run at all. This one will be a little annoying, but the real problem will be if I get attacked at some point in the day. I won't be able to run away, and I'll have to fight. The dead item shop had a pocket watch and a monomycenium for me. I had to power walk all the way back home after this because my exhaustion was almost full and I had ran out of coffee and lemons. After a quick nap, I went out to pick herbs. 
Usually I pick more, but since I'm really slow, I only went to the crowstone and back. At the bar, I bought a lemon, some nuts, and slept until morning. It is now day five. I'm going to try my best to avoid burn districts today as much as I can, since I can't run from anyone. The first things I did today were treating grief and heading to the hospital. I didn't realize that today I need to treat some patients at the hospital, so I didn't bring the supplies I needed, so for now, I'll just collect the organs. I got some infected blood, kidney, heart, and brain, and a normal liver. Because of all the organs in my inventory, I couldn't take anything from the fund, so I'll need to come back for that as well. Next, I had to cut through the chine, which is burned, but luckily I got through it safely. Then, I did a little trading, bought some things from a pharmacy, and treated Anna. I agreed to do the bull sacrifice later and bought a tourniquet and two neomyceniums from a pharmacy. While at this pharmacy, I was thinking about how I'm going to minimize my bottle usage since I'm always low on them. I decided that instead of using tinctures for my own immunity, I'll try to only use them for my bound, and I'm going to start buying and trading for immunity boosters for myself. At the lair, I set some organs to brew, took a nap, and got everything I needed for the hospital. Back at the hospital, I finished the job and collected a few more organs that I couldn't get before. I didn't get any more infected organs, so I made a quick trip to Vars to sell the organs and buy some healing items. Since I didn't want to walk there, I took the boat to Lars to pick up the rest of my things and pick up the rest of the fun. Now it's time for the bull sacrifice. I walked all the way over there, and then I cut the bull and went to the lair to sleep. Then I took a few of the antibiotics I made and went out to pick herbs. Eventually midnight hit and I could finally start running around again. No one got infected today and no one died. So Anna is still in first place and Grief is in second. And it's also time to spin the wheel again. Today's challenge is germaphobe. You gain a sudden fear of germs, specifically from any kind of container. Do not open any containers all day. This does not include the cabinet in the lair. Not opening any containers for the day means no trash cans, no caches, and no fund. After I finished with herbs in the bar, I brewed some tinctures, took some morphine, and went to sleep. While sleeping, I got the dream where Taya tells you to go to Shaken, so I'll be doing that in a bit. But first, I treated Grief and Anna, and I checked out a few pharmacies. At Shaken, I got the blood for the panacea and picked some of the herbs here as well. After I set the panaceas to brew, I went to the hospital for today's job. I had to extract a bunch of organs today, so I kept all the infected ones for myself and left the normal ones for the objective. In total, I got five infected organs and one normal liver, kidney, and brain. After this, I spent my last bit of money on a bandage and traded away the little items I had on me. Since I'm not allowed to open any containers, I couldn't collect any trading items, and today has very little to do, so I'm just going to head back to the lair and sleep until it gets dark. Tonight, I'm meeting Murky at the Crowstone. Back when I didn't buy the bull, I said I would be spinning another wheel for important decisions, such as whether or not I should save Murky. And unfortunately, the wheel has decided that Murky will die, so I'll just be leaving her at the crowstone, I guess. At midnight, I got my dice rolls. Alexander and Eva joined the game. Grief survived, and Anna came very close to dying, but luckily she survived. It's wheel time again, and today's challenge is Tasty Dust. The plague's voice convinces you to taste some plague clouds. Eat three plague clouds. I think this is the first challenge to give me another objective to do in the day. So at some point today, I'll be taking a few play clouds to the face. To finish the night, I went to the dead item shop, sold some things to grief, and bought out the bar. I only have eight bottles, and I need to treat four people today. I also only have one immunity booster, which won't be enough to handle today's challenge. So what I'm going to do is make all of my bottles into the plus version of Medrol tinctures and use these for myself. And hopefully while I'm out, I can get enough bottles to come back and make the tinctures I need for my bound. I took a neomycenium and headed out for the day. At a few pharmacies, I bought some healing items and antibiotics, and I used one of the bandages I bought and two tourniquets to take a neomycenium for my infection. On my way into the backbone, I got hit by my first plate cloud, and shortly after this, I ran into another one. To finish my challenge, I went into Infected Home and inhaled that last bit of tasty dust. After this, I only had one tincture left. I made a quick stop at Town Hall for my fund, and then I completed my job at the hospital. I already have a few infected organs stocked up at the lair, and I don't have the space for it now, so I won't be harvesting any organs today. Oh, and before I left, I gave out my panacea to someone. Next, I went to Vars to buy some bandages, immunity boosters, and other drugs. And I spoke with the Inquisitor. She told me to head back to Shaken, so I'll be going there in a bit. 
While I was doing all this, I managed to collect 11 bottles of water, 8 immunity boosters, and plenty of antibiotics. I've been able to trade for all of the stuff in one day after not being able to trade much yesterday. Once I made it back to the lair, I brewed all of my tinctures I could, and I was able to treat Grief, Anna, Alexander, and Eva. Now it's time for Shaken, but first, there's something I need to deal with on the way over there. And that is, what I should do about Grace's situation. I could ignore Grace today, and she'll end up dying, or I can help her deal with the cemetery. So once again, I'll be spinning a wheel to decide what to do. And the wheel has decided that I should help Grace. So after that, I spoke with Oyen at Shaken and went back to the lair to have some morphine and a nap. Then I started walking to the dead item shop when I got my dice rolls. Tonight everyone survived, and Aspidi, Lara, and Andre have become infected. So far, Anna has survived four days, Grief has survived three, and Eva and Alexander are tied for one. And as always, I spun the challenge wheel. Today's wheel landed on Insomnia, which means I need to spin again. This time, the wheel landed on Run the Gauntlet, which means I need to survive in an infected home for four hours. So today, I have two challenges. I'm going to have to waste four hours of my time in an infected home, and I need to find items to fight off my exhaustion. The night's dead item shop had a pocket watch, a neomycenium, and some twirene for me. Next, I took one of my antibiotics, collected my herbs for the night, and brewed a few tinctures. At the shady shop, I bought a lemon, and at the bar, I got another lemon. Then, I treated Anna, gave out my last panacea, collected my fund, and bought another lemon from a grocery store. Since Run the Gauntlet is going to be a big time waster, I'm going to get it over with now. In the chine, I bought a tourniquet, which I immediately used to take a monomycenium plus, and then I crossed a street into the infected house I'll be staying in. It's currently 6.58, so I'll be in here until 10.58. When I closed my map, I saw that there was an infected person coming right for me. Luckily, I was able to kill them before they did anything to me. So there are two plague clouds in this house. One's at the top of the stairs, and one's in this room, which I can see through the wall. I looted everything I could from the bottom floor and used my lamp to get past a cloud at the top of the stairs and looted everything from the top floor. After this, I went to the room where the other plague cloud was. I went in because it disappeared, but when I entered the room, it appeared again and it hit me. And now that I've explored this building, all I'll have to do is wait. So once it hit 10.58, I left. At this point, my exhaustion was around halfway full, so I checked out the grocery store near Lara's, but it didn't have any coffee or lemons for me. Today's job at the theater is just to wait again. After I wasted more of my time with that, I bought some drugs and healing items from Vars and another pharmacy. At the cathedral, I treated grief, and then I took the boat to the lair. Here, I brewed the few bottles I had into Medrol Plus tinctures. These tinctures will slightly lower your exhaustion, and if it comes to it, I'll need to use them. Next, I treated Andre and went to the hindquarters grocery, but had no luck there with coffee or lemons. Then, I finally went to the termitary. The kin want me to bring in the person responsible for what happens to them, and this is the perfect situation for another wheel spin. On this wheel, I've listed save both Vlads, kill both Vlads, kill big Vlad, or kill small Vlad. The wheel has decided that small Vlad shall die. Before heading to speak with the Vlads, I checked both the Skinner's Grocery and the Tanner's Grocery, and neither of them had anything for me. The only groceries I haven't checked today are the ones in the Maw and the Atrium. Hopefully one of them has something I can use for my exhaustion, because it's getting pretty high. Also, I don't have enough tinctures to correctly diagnose anyone, so I had to give Alexander a random pill and I incorrectly treated him. At Big Vlad's house, I told him to stay put, and then I told Little Vlad that he should head on over to the termitary. The Maw grocery once again had nothing, and my exhaustion was almost full now. On my way to the atrium, I ran into this dude who just saved my life. He had two coffees on him, which I immediately ate. Hopefully this should be enough to get me through the rest of the day. And with that, it's safe to say that I beat both of today's challenges. Next, I incorrectly treated Eva and went to the last grocery store. They didn't have any coffee or lemons for me either, so it's really lucky that I was able to trade for them instead. I was somehow able to treat Aspidy and Lara correctly, and after taking an antibiotic for my infection, I went out to pick herbs. And now, it's time for the dice rolls. Aspidy and Alexander died. Anna, Lara, Eva, and Andre survived, and Yulia joined the competition. Unfortunately, Grief died tonight. He was the only one who could have beat Anna. Since she's been alive for so long, I think she'll be keeping that first place position in the infection competition. And today's challenge is quarantine. A random quarter of town is locked down for the day. No entering that quarter, but you may leave. 
Spin a wheel to determine the quarter. For the second wheel, I've listed the earth quarter, knot quarter, and stone yard quarter, and the wheel picked the stone yard quarter. I actually got really lucky with it landing on stone yard, because if it were any other district, I would have lost access to the lair, fund, or hospital. Anyway, since it did land on stone yard, I can't go there for any reason today, which means I won't be able to treat Eva today. At the dead item shop, I bought a schmouter for the hospital later today, and after I finished picking herbs, I sold them to the bar. As always, I'm low on bottles, so I'm only going to make enough to treat our champion, Anna. Everyone else is going to have to get a random pill. I'm also currently out of immunity boosters, so I'm going to need some of the tinctures for myself. After I slept, I bought a bandage and a tourniquet, and in the morning, the army arrived. Now that the army is in town, I have another thing to worry about. Since I'm infected, the army's flamethrower soldiers will attack me. And if I get caught in any fire, I'm surely going to die. Next, I did a little trading and spoke to Oyen. He told me it's safe for me to enter the abattoir now, but I have some things to do around town first. On my way to Anna's, I nearly walked into a flamethrower, but I was able to get inside before that. Since I'm here, I treated Anna. At the hospital, I used the schmutter I bought earlier to complete today's job. Then, it was time to take another antibiotic for my infection and to pick up the fund. Before heading to the lair, I correctly treated Lara and Yulia, and incorrectly treated Andre. I'm out of water, and if I'm gonna be finding some odongs, I need stamina. After a bit of wandering, I finally found a barrel in the Skinners and filled all my bottles. Now that I'm prepared, it's time to decide what I should do about the kin in the termitary. And that means, it's time for another wheel. This wheel decided that instead of reuniting the kin, I'll have to kill the schismed members. I still have my Menku's finger from the bull sacrifice to use as a weapon, but its durability is low. Before I started fighting, I had to use three tourniquets because my health was already kind of low. Once I got into the termitary, an Odong locked on to me immediately. In the position I'm in, he's going to end up pushing me towards another Odong. Once I got a stab in, I managed to move behind him and away from Odong too. I used the last bit of my Menku's finger to finish off the first Odong and used a bandage to heal. I'm going to have to do the rest of this with my fists now. I landed 6 hits on Odong too, and maneuvered behind him just in time because another Odong was right behind me. We traded a few hits and I backed up a bit to heal and tried to see where the last Odong is, but I couldn't see where he was just yet. After a bit more fighting and circling this area, I finally killed the two that were chasing me, and the fourth Odong had finally seen me. Since this one is alone, I was able to deal with him easily, and with that I ended the schism. I didn't want to use any more of my bandages to heal, so instead I went back to the lair to sleep. When I woke up, Murky's friend infected all the kids on my list, and then I went to the abattoir. I stealthed past the first Odong here, and got the Menku's finger and killed the rest that were in my way. Dealing with the abattoir was easier since I had a reliable weapon and I could take on all of the Odongs one on one. Anyway, I left and I got my dice rolls. Anna is somehow still alive. Lara and Yulia also survived. Maria got infected, and Eva and Andre are out of the competition. And today's challenge is Trial by Fire, which means I need to kill an arsonist. I'm now out of crafted antibiotics and low on morphine and bandages. At the lair, I took a few pills and slept to heal up. I gave Sticky a random pill and incorrectly treated him. I only brewed the tinctures I needed for myself and Anna, and I headed out for the day. To start out the day, I went to Shiken. Here I incorrectly treated Taya and found out the truth about Oyen. And now I have another decision to make. Which means I have another wheel to spin. Kill Oyen or let him live? The wheel chose to kill, so I did just that. Back in town, I bought some pills and immunity boosters from a pharmacy, and shortly after, I found an arsonist attacking some infected people. I only hit him once with the Menku's finger, and he fell over. Which means I guess today's challenge is over. But honestly, that was a little disappointing, so I'll be killing any other arsonists I see today as well. Next, I successfully treated Anna and Grace. A messenger from the Inquisitor dragged me to the cathedral, so now that I'm here, I failed to treat Maria. Then, I stocked up on supplies from Varus and successfully treated Lara. At Town Hall, I picked up my last fun reward. Outside was another flamethrower, so I had to go in and out of a building to get around him. In the Chine, I came across another arsonist. He didn't see me, so I was able to kill this one just as easy as the other one. Here, I incorrectly treated Yulia, and then I correctly treated Capella. My infection's looking a bit high, so after taking a pill, I slept in Vlad's to save on some healing items. To end the day, I treated Khan and went back to the lair. And here's my final set of dice rolls. Sticky survived, Katarina and Peter got infected, but it's too late for them to join the game. Lara, Grace, Capella, Maria, Taya, Khan, and Yulia all died. 
And unfortunately, our champion, Anna, has perished. The infection competition is now over, and it's time to go over everyone's placings. I started the infection competition to see how long I can keep an infected person alive for, so let's see how I did. In last place are Katarina and Peter, who waited way too long to get in on the game. Fifth place goes to Notkin, Aspity, and Maria for living for just one day. Fourth place goes to Alexander, Andre, Yulia, Grace, Khan, Taya, Capella, and Sticky for surviving two days. Third place is a tie between Eva and Lara. They both lived for three days. Grief gets second place for four days, and we all know who won. Anna has first place at seven days survived while infected. I can confidently say that seven days is the longest I've had anyone survive while infected on any of my runs. With all of that over, let's move on to the final day. To start things off, we have a few wheels to spin. First, let's spin for the challenge. And the last challenge is germaphobe, but I've already had this challenge already, so I need to spin again. Today's challenge is trial by fire, another one I've already had. Okay, today's actual challenge is heavy air. Okay, next spin has to be something new. It's contaminated food. The food in your pockets somehow got contaminated. Drop all currently held food. Today, I have four challenges. I can't open any containers. I can't run. I need to drop all the food I'm holding, and I need to kill an arsonist. I have one last decision to make and one last wheel to spin. This time, the wheel is picking my ending, and it has decided that it wants the late ending. To get the late ending, I need to ignore the quest today and wait until midnight. To start the day, I slept until morning and then went out. I found two arsonists and easily killed both of them. Then I went back to the lair, slept until the day ended, exited the theater, and ended the game. Well, that was quick. And kind of a disappointing way to end the run. But I suppose it is only fitting to let the wheel decide how it all ends. But I think I want more. Just a little bit more pain to end it all. And what better way to do this than replaying the final day with all of the challenges active. Let's quickly go over everything I'm going to have to do. First, all of the passive challenges. A random quarter of town was locked down. This is going to be the Knots Quarter, which is the middle section of town. I'm not allowed to gather water from any source. I can't run. All stores are closed for the day. I can't sleep. I can't open any containers. I need to stay away from water, and I can't interact with anyone. Second, these challenges give me objectives to do in the day. I need to attack the first three people I see. I need to drop all of the food I'm holding. I need to eat three plague clouds. I need to survive in an infected home for four hours. I need to not move for four hours. I need to find and eat rotten food. I need to kill an arsonist. And lastly, I need to fist fight an infected person. Whew, this is a lot. Hopefully I can do it all. I'm still going to be going for the late ending. I just need to get everything done before the game ends. So let's start this. I couldn't do anything just yet because of the pass out challenge. I need to stand still for four hours for this challenge to be complete. While waiting, I dropped all of my food for the contaminated food challenge. By the third hour mark, my hunger filled up and I was starving. Once my time was up, I went straight over to the cabinet to pick up all the food I'm going to need today. After that, I went out for the day. One of the things I need to do is find and eat some rotten food. And for another challenge, I'm not allowed to open any containers. To make the rotten food one possible, I'll be opening containers, but I won't take anything from them unless it's rotten food. As I entered the hindquarters, I ate my first plague cloud and saw my first victim. Because of the sudden psychosis challenge, I need to attack the first three people I see, and this soldier was the first. The next two people I saw were another two soldiers in the distance. I managed to kill one of them, but the other one shot me before I could land a hit. And this was my first death of the run. But I don't really mind it, since this is more of a bonus thing. After waiting four hours and dropping all my food again, I went back out to the hindquarters. Here I ate the same play cloud and killed the same soldier. Shortly after this, I came across an arsonist and killed him. This marks the trial by fire challenge complete, and this counts as one of my psychosis victims. Next, I ran into another play cloud and went into an infected home. In this house, I finished the Tasty Dust Challenge and waited here for another 4 hours for the Run the Gauntlet Challenge. I only have 3 tinctures left and I still have more things to do. After leaving the house, I killed my last person and wandered around a bit looking for rotten food. During this, I accidentally ran into a plague cloud and now I'm down to 1 tincture. Then I came across an infected person. One of the challenges I never got in my run was the only way to help. For this one, you need to fist fight an infected person. And this didn't go well for me. 
I killed the infection person, but now I'm out of tinctures, and my infection is going to be rising quickly. I could take some pills, but I don't have the bandages to recover the health I'd lose, and I can't sleep to heal either. I just need to find some rotten food, then I can leave the infected district. But trash can after trash can, I found nothing. At one point, I accidentally walked into some fire and got attacked by an arsonist. By now, I think I've checked every trash can in the district. I'm out of bandages, my infection is crazy high, and I still have 11 hours left in this day. It's clear to me that I won't be living, but maybe I can still complete the rotten food challenge. Since I didn't find any in the trash cans, I decided to start checking homes. My health was rapidly going down, and in a panic, I ran into a plague cloud and an infected person. And finally, the infection caught up to me, and I died for a second time. I think that with my current items, doing all challenges might be impossible. I only have 8 tinctures, and because of my passive challenges, I can't gather anything for immunity or health. If I had these supplies, I think I could actually do this. So let's try one more run. And this time, I have until morning to prepare, and once it's morning, all challenges go active again. I started the night by filling the five bottles I had on me with a barrel in the warehouses. Next, I checked out a few pharmacies. In the gut, I bought a tourniquet, and I decided to buy a mask. Normally, I won't buy stuff like this, but I think it could really help me beat these challenges. I went to the pharmacy in the marrow, but they didn't have anything for me. And now, I'm gonna head over to Vars. There, I bought two tourniquets, a bandage, and an immunity booster. I also stopped in a clothes store nearby and replaced my mask with a gas mask. I think I've done all I can, so I took the boat back to the lair. I started the night with 4 bandages and 5 empty bottles, and I gained 1 bandage, 3 tourniquets, an immunity booster, 9 bottles of water, and a gas mask. I brewed all of my bottles into a total of 17 tinctures. Then I took a few infection pills and slept so that I could heal before morning. After the bell rang, all challenges are active again. Again, I dropped my food, waited for 4 hours, picked up the food I needed for today, and headed out. The same thing happened to me in the hindquarters. I took a plague cloud to the face and killed a soldier. This time, an infected person spawned nearby. After a quick boxing match, I finished another challenge. The next people I saw were the soldiers that previously killed me. I already attacked two people, and I don't actually need to kill the person I attacked. So I hit one of the soldiers and walked as fast as I could to an infected house. And now, sudden psychosis is completed. The time is 12.30. I need to stay in this house until 16.30. I'm also down to 11 tinctures. In this house, I ran into an infected person and killed them. I also ate the last two play clouds I needed for tasty dust. And the gas mask has actually been very helpful. I've received much less immunity damage from these clouds than usual. My time in this house is up. I have five and a half hours left in this day, and I still need to get two more challenges done. After a bit of walking, I came across an arsonist and a flamethrower standing close together. I didn't want to get too close to the flamethrower, but after failing to lure the arsonist away, I just had to go for it. I somehow managed to kill him without the flamethrower guy attacking me. And now, I just need to find some rotten food. I've got five tinctures left and my gas mask is close to breaking. In one house, I got hit by a plague cloud, and in another, I ran out to avoid another cloud. There wasn't rotten food in these houses, and I've already checked all the trash cans in the area. At this point, I remember that the crude sprawl is also infected today, so I headed on over there to check the trash cans. And finally, I found some rotten food! I gobbled it down and completed the last active challenge I had today. I left the district with two tinctures and one bandage left. I waited for three hours for the day to end, and I was sent to the theater to end the game. And there it is. I completed the game while infected, and I did the final day with all of the challenges active. Being infected for the entire game wasn't as difficult or interesting as I thought it was going to be, so I'm glad I decided to spice up the playthrough with the challenge wheel and infection competition. For future pathologic runs, I think I'll also be including similar things to this just to keep things from being boring. If you have any ideas for mini challenges I could do during a run, leave a comment and let me know. I posted my entire playthrough of this on my second channel if you're interested in watching, but I should warn you, I am a bit boring. I'll be making more pathologic videos in the future, so if you want, subscribe, and thanks for watching.